Well, I used to go to Santa Pod Raceway with my dad. So he took me drag racing quite a lot when I was a little kid. And uh, just the noise, the smell, the sound of those drag engines racing up the, the strip, just I think that really got to me and, uh, and that put a passion for cars and, and going fast and speed. He always had nice cars. He had a Triumph TR5 when he was young um, and, uh, and this classic 1951 Ford Pilot, which he's uh, passed on to me now, a very unique car. And I think he influenced me most when I was young and after after I was sort of 15 and getting into driving, he was into football and had given up with the car side of things. It's pretty much just me and my dad. Yeah, there's not really many petrol heads in my family. Um, I am the car nut out of everyone. Everybody says they love cars, but very few people remortgage their home to buy their dream car. My first car was a Fiesta, not very unique. After the uh, Fiesta, I got a Mark IV Golf. I had a V6 full motion, um, and then I modified that fully. So that had lowered full coilovers from Coney, 18 inch Porsche replica wheels, Porsche brakes, full DCAT exhaust system from Miltec, induction kit, uh, ECU remap, and then the usual little bits and pieces here and there carbon fiber trim, tinted windows, sound system stuff. I've always loved the Nissan GTR. I think I loved the R32 when I first saw it, I loved the R33, the R34, I think that was really my dream car, was the R34. And then when I saw the R35, I thought that's, that's it, that's the new reincarnation, the best version of it. A lot of people don't know what it is, they're, they're surprised I've spent so much money on a Nissan. And I get the, uh, the old boys like to call it a Daihatsu. So you don't really need a car in London. You know, I drive it like a Fiesta to the shops, it goes to Morrison's, Waitrose, I go to supermarkets, I go over speed bumps in it. I drive around like a granny most of the time in it. It's only once you get out into the countryside or onto a big main road can you really give it some. And I really need to push it to its limits only on the track. I only really drive it fast in a straight line at the moment on the roads. It's the car can do more than I can do and I'm very aware of that. It's like a game of top trumps for GTR. You know, it's got the two turbos, it's got the four exhausts, it's got the 20 inch alloys, it's got the 550 PS 545 horsepower, it's got the 460 torque. It's got all the things that tick all the right boxes. It's only got two doors, it's only really got two seats. The steering is very, very direct. You know, the tyres are wide, you feel everything through the road. The weight is all kind of inboard so that it feels agile. All of that, for me, is just the ultimate. It just ticks every single box. I don't think I've made any sacrifices in life for my GTR. I only really held back on spending too much money on other things. So I've consciously not taken any holidays, knowing that the car's going to swallow up a lot of my money in fuel, in insurance, and probably in tyres. So I'm conscious that that's uh, a bit of a drawback. I love the acceleration, the speed. If it didn't have the G meters, if it didn't have the different gauges and all that in the GTR or the, your sensors or any of the other things it has, I think I'd still love the car. The way things are going at the moment, GTRs have been getting better and better year on year. From 09 to this current one, there's a, quite a big difference. So the new one in 2016 could be very different. Could be 800 horsepower, could be a hybrid, could be anything. So I'd wait and see what that is before I made a decision on whether I'll keep the one I've got or upgrade in the future. The car scares me quite a lot. Um, when it starts stepping out on you, it's a little bit frightening, but I've got faith in it, and it's a very well-balanced car, so it's quite predictable and quite easy to control. So when it does get out of hand, it's easy to bring it back. I will be tempted to modify the GTR, but at the moment, 550 is enough for me. I can't imagine what it's like with a 1,000. I do hear of people with 700, 800, and they've all recommended it to me. Maybe one day I'll get there, but at the moment, 550's plenty. The feeling of getting pushed back in the seat, it's a bit like a roller coaster. I can't ever imagine getting tired of a roller coaster, but I've never lived on one. I'm not gonna live in my GTR, I'll, I'll be driving it every day. So once a day is plenty, and I think that feeling is very addictive. Find that when people find out I've got the GTR and I'm only 28 years old, I do get a lot of jealous reactions. 
Um, but that's to be expected. But that makes me smile because it reminds me that I'm lucky and you know, what I have is, is, is amazing. You know, not to forget that.